Hello, and welcome to the Ranting Corner Podcast. The Random Corner Podcast. We do things. Ooh. All the things. Ooh. All the things. I'm All your host, I didn't even know you were starting. Internet personality, Gonzaki. There are people. <laughs> They're not important. Say hello, Felicity. Hey. But I'm important. <laughs> hello, everyone. I'm Felicity, so apparently I'm important because I actually get called by name, so... <laughs> because I'm cool like that. Aren't you like the vice president of evil viceness or something? I am like that? the evil vice dictator of evil of Gensakistan. That Here is my go. official title. Well, it isn't actually Gensakistan now. It's like Gensakaburg or something. That's yes, the temporarily name of the it is town. in Gensakaburg. Gensakaburg. You have towns inside countries. This is how it works. <laughs> anyway. And I have a cube outside. <laughs> yes coming up with a name for your uh the town your cube will be in It'll we're just gonna call it an eyesore area. <laughs> <laughs> for now we're just calling it an eyesore. eyesore uh dear bob Zach, we want to demolish your cube for crimes against humanity <laughs> no see what we're gonna put out there is we're gonna put out um the sprite art museum out there there'll just be a <laughs> yes. bunch of eyesores around his cube and but it's be supposed to be a self-sustaining cube, so he shouldn't matter, or he shouldn't mind at all, until we build the secret railroad underground, and start emancipating his chickens. Anyway, can I sign the Emancipation Proclamation to sound really badass? Go for it. Yes. Anyway, um, starting with PlayStation because everyone likes PlayStation. <coughs> no one likes PlayStation. Kidding. Not anymore. Um, we're going to be getting a news event on February 20th where they say we are going to see the future. So, of course, you, you all know what this second. means. We're getting a sequel to Shadow of the, the Colossus. When? Now, everyone's assuming PlayStation 4. Um, I'm assuming PlayStation 4 because I can't really think of anything they would show off that would see the future except for PlayStation 4. And watch, they're going to call it the play box. <laughs> what, are they ripping the off Steam so now? The, yeah, totally. Yeah. The Sony Time Machine. Actually, I'd probably buy that. <laughs> if if they make that, can I get mine colored blue and name it the TARDIS? Cause I, now, I want mine specifically designed to slot into the back of a DeLorean. I've always wanted a DeLorean, and that then, would be a reason say, to buy one. <laughs> I just I want mine to be Doctor Who themed. If they're gonna if they're gonna make it like absolutely ridiculous, then I want it to be Doctor Who themed. But then now, they okay, have to make it bigger on do. the inside. Just even better, inside even better if it even better if it gives me a holographic version of either Captain Jack or David Tennant. Because David Tennant is the best doctor. Anybody that fights me with me, I'm going to punch you in the face. Uh, you might have to go with uh, body pillows. We don't have uh, hot holographic uh, technology done yet. Shh, we will. It, don't worry about it. It's a good thing I live across the country from you. Unless you're looking at trading cards, all of the holographic. Anyway, <laughs> something oh, the 90s. our good friend Eddie said the other day has led to what I wanted to put here, because this is really a small thing, because we could talk all day about what PlayStation could be unveiling. It's the PlayStation 4. But I want to have a specific rant about E3. Why? Oh, Lord, Jen. Because E3 is not as relevant as people want to think it is. Why? Well, let's say they were going to uh, wait until E3 to uh, announce something big. They never really do. The most you get is game announcements there. Everything leaks early. It's a press-only event, which doesn't actually mean it's press-only. It means we have people who pretend to be press, they write for their school newspaper or something, they get a bag, and then they or they get a badge, and then they go there and they collect swag all day and not do anything no, no. press related. No, Jin, Jin, it is not swag. That word does not exist in the vocabulary. It is a goodie bag. Hey, hey, hey. I will use it in this scenario no. because that is what they refer to it to, and I will meet them no. on their own terms. It's swag. a goodie bag. Anyway. Good bag. Shut Swag. up, Eddie. You're uh, one of the uh, people I'm talking about. <laughs> Shut up at you. <laughs> but my another yeah. thing I get is they show less and less every year. 
And it's getting to the point with a lot of cases where they don't really have good gameplay setups. They just expect you to watch what they want you to see something specific, watch it, and then go out and tell your friends, look at what I saw, and yeah. We don't get anything from E3 anymore. Like I said, the most we get is game releases anymore, and that doesn't really matter. It's more about the hardware, unless the game is something really awesome, and I'm trying to come up with things. But yeah, we get new games and visual confirmations of prototypes we've already heard of months in advance. Like, if you want, like, E3 should not be talked about as much. The good ones are Gamescom and PAX, the ones where actual shit happens. And I know they don't really show thing, new things at that, but at least you get to play the games, which, as a gamer, that's the most important part. Blah! There's my bit. So I'm guessing we're not doing E3. Or I'm guessing we're not doing E3 predictions and stuff this year. No, we probably will. It's just I'll be snarky and annoying, like you always are. Got it. And here's the thing: like I can understand the thing with E3 because I don't see it as big of a deal as some people do. Okay. Before anyone says that I'm being hypocritical, I would love to go to E3. I would love to go to E3 because it's a chance to speak with developers, and it's that whole feeling exclusive thing, even if you aren't. Give it's kind of that cool feeling. URL on it. There you go. Totally. And it's it's this cool thing of getting to go and have that experience. I would love to go. But it is you you are right. A lot of the stuff like the PlayStation is going to get leaked beforehand. Xbox, if they're going to announce something like that, everyone's going to know before it even happens. So like, and you do get to play some games at that one. I mean, last year, I believe they had Gears of War Judgment there and they had the new mode Overrun able to be played. If I remember right, I'm not exactly I did. sure. I did. So yeah, I'm pretty, yeah, I, I was pretty sure that they did because some of mine and Eddie's friends had played it and they said it was amazing and it's supposed to be kind of a League of Legends-esque type thing, sort of. But um, we may end up talking about that later when the League game actually comes out. League of Legends Lancers. That actually sounds like it could work. I know, doesn't it? But um, he's, he's, he's it's just left. So, so um, the thing is, is that they've made it so exclusive that most people are like, "Oh, E3 is coming. Okay, cool. Whatever. I'm gonna start saving for packs." That's well, how a lot of my friends see it. Even though they're big in the gaming community, they're just kind of like, "Okay," and. Do you want a cookie or something? Yeah, the the other thing, it's not just the exclusivity. It's also how tight-lipped the developers have to be. They can only show you so much. It's so rigid that you're more likely to get useful insights into the game's development at another less controlled uh, convention. Because at E3... They really, they're trying to put out an image, and by doing that, I think they tr really limit what they can do. Because people, or at least I, I'm being general there, I don't really care what they want me to hear. I want to be able to have a conversation with them and for them to give me honest answers. But no, yeah, it's, their bosses really want them to say something specific, and that's all they can say. And... Maybe and I, just the past few years, where I've been able to see some specific stuff on on E on E three instead of hearing from it after the fact, is I'm like like I, for example, I watched a lot more last year on E three than I ever have before. You know, actually watching it live and all that stuff. And the big thing for me was whoop de doo, especially when you have what should be the big game announcements and they don't put a lot of depth into it. They'll put. Um, I remember a couple years ago. Uh, I, I watched the Nintendo press conference, and there was some stuff I was impressed. A lot of the stuff that people were, were going big would be about, for example, them having the symf the symphony orchestra or whatever. I was like, eh, it doesn't sound as good. And um, just some of the game announcements this, this past year as, in particular is they were focusing on what shouldn't have been focused on. And they put what should have been the big game announcements. They kind of go, oh, yeah, this game's coming out too. 
give you a, a big example. Two years ago, was it two years ago when they announced um, announced uh, Kirby's Return to Dreamland? I think yeah. so. I mean, that should have been a big trailer moment. That was like one of the biggest games they revealed. And it's like, oh yeah, it's it's coming out. Now let's go show some more dance off. <laughs> no, no, they they don't get what gamers want, and that that's just frustrating because what should be the big announcements they just kind of skirt over. It's like, okay, we know you guys want to hear about the big, cool, awesome games coming to Xbox, but let's just talk about Connect for an hour. Uh, what's okay? Yeah, they talked about Connect's mm -hmm. new sporting functionality. It's like you really don't understand the standard nerd, do you? If if Connect 2.0 is what the original Connect was intended to be, I will be thoroughly impressed. If it isn't, I'm not going to buy one. I don't see a point in it. Mm -hmm. Like Jen would always like Jen would say, and you know I understand. Most people want to be able to sit down and have that controller in their hand, which you know makes sense. But at the same time, they're gonna probably want to market it to the younger generation, that mom and pop generation of hey mom pop grandma grandpa come play with our new system oh you're the hardcore gamers over there with your torches and pitchforks and eh, we'll just hose you down you're no big issue here here's your call of duty game guys go have fun that and I'm sort not, of thing yeah and i'm not against trying to sell to mom and pop but mom and pop don't watch e3 why try to sell things to them at e3 if they're not watching because no, it's televised. Mm -hmm. That's why it's televised. I'm pretty sure Mom and Pop will tune in too. <laughs> I'd like to see the numbers on that. I really would. I would too. Just because just shove things. the numbers in their face. Like, these are the people you should be trying to sell this stuff to, and these are the people who aren't watching you. And I'll be honest. Last year, the best press conference was Ubisoft because Ubisoft knew who they were reaching out to. Yeah, it was about the, it was about the game, the games. It was awesome. We got to see what we really wanted. Ubisoft got it. The other developers didn't. I think if more people took off of Ubisoft, I think we'd have a superb back in like you know 2004 style of E3s. Back when you didn't have like inter when you had internet, but you didn't have it to where it was all over the damn place yeah. on the internet. Yeah, I think that's one of the big things is the internet has also made E3 rather irrelevant because you can just put out an article on it and that's all you really need. But moving on, I think we're starting to beat a dead horse. <laughs> hey, I want Clue. Um, dead Space 3. i am been looking forward to it. I think... Um, if anything, just to see if they can truly make a co-op game scary. But it has come with some controversy in that um, they have admit their executive uh, said they want to deliver a very similar uh, experience on each platform, which is fair. The only problem is they don't realize that you can get a similar experience on each platform, even though each platform is going to have different graphic styles. Because the difference between Meyer, Mar uh, Meyer Felicity's um, uh, PCs versus an Xbox or a PS3 is eight years worth of hardware innovations. That eight years is going to include graphical innovations and big ones. But the Dead Space team doesn't – I just take – they don't want to do it. And I'm, I can only think this is out of laziness because how is better graphics going to equal a different experience? Because the game is out to scare you. And the big thing that got me is – the guy who was saying all of this contradicted himself in the same paragraph. At the beginning of the paragraph, he said, PC is a very different platform. And about halfway through that same paragraph, he says, PC isn't a significantly different platform. Guy? Yeah. What the fuck? Do, At do, least do, wait do, 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 three do, do, do. paragraphs to contradict yourself. Like, I, at least I can think you weren't aware of the contradiction. You have to have noticed that in your own head. Nope. 
you know, there, there, there's, that, there's that little fine line <clears throat> to where people will sit and they will say something and not realize exactly what came out of their mouth. And then when you look at them funny, they go, yeah, I know what I said. And they don't realize, yeah, they freaking said something and it fell out of their mouth and they didn't realize what the fuck they were talking about. Well, this is the well, executive, though. He planned out what he was going to say. I can't imagine that he wasn't he he hadn't practiced what he was going to say hours beforehand. And I'm pretty sure that even with that practice, no one stopped him and said, "Sir, are you sure you want to say that?" Of course, I'm sure. I'm the fucking executive. Well, and here's Eddie's the thing involving there. here's here's the thing involving Dead Space. If they're gonna go and not improve the experience if you want to call it i call it improving the graphics so that it makes me want it on pc guess what they're gonna make all these copies for pc and no one's gonna buy them you know what's gonna happen the one or two people that do buy them are going to port them over onto the pc they are then going to put them on some site where you can pirate them and that's what everyone's going to do because they're going to be like, why should I pay for something that they willingly admitted saying, yeah, we didn't improve the graphics because we wanted everyone to have an equal experience. Exactly. I you don't know what? readily if... support piracy, but when you say something like this, there really it. is very few reasons to not pirate this game because a on a PC, this game, given the way they're putting it, is worth probably half of what they're going to sell it for. Because this game is going to be a $60 release. Mm -hmm. And they're going to expect you to pay $60 for something that they didn't put their best into. And the thing is, is that they don't have the time. They don't have the time to actually improve anything now. It comes out Tuesday. We are literally three days from that launch. Well, that's the and thing. I don't believe be that they didn't have point. the time because when you're making a game, you make all of the textures and everything like that in super high resolution and then you scale them down to fit the platform. I don't believe that they made these um, textures in 720p. Have the time to and correct this. That it would take too long or that they can't then put them up to 1080. They probably made them in much higher than 1080 or even beyond. And then scaled them down to 720, and they just don't want to put the effort in. To be perfectly honest, sorry to interrupt you there, Bubba. You can push the... I mean, I know that the game's gold, and it's going to be coming out Tuesday. If you were any kind of, you know, smart for that matter, you could stop and go, Huh, we can push this back, oh, I don't know, maybe six to nine months during that time in which, you know, we actually start getting games again, because I don't know if you've got this on the docket already, uh, Jen, but I'm going to go ahead and mention it. Uh, Grand Theft Auto has been pushed back to September, so mm -hmm. they're going to take time. They're going to take time to buff that out. Make sure all well, the that's the thing. With Grand Most Theft Auto pushed taken. back, they don't uh, have major competition, um, or yeah. I don't see a lot of major games coming out at this point, Yet. so it's a prime right now or early in the year this is a prime time to be releasing games because people will have money now yeah yep and then people like later on in the year will start mm -hmm. but i don't think time constraints an issue because like i said i think they already have it ready it's just e either they are being lazy or they are holding to a philosophy that makes no sense let's go with yes <laughs> and you know what? The whole thing is, you okay, you want to deliver a similar experience. Similar experience has nothing to do with graphics. Similar experience has to do with gameplay. Mm -hmm. Offer a similar gameplay experience on all of, all of the consoles, but don't feel limited by graphics. Mm -hmm. um, to continue the Dead Space, yes, this takes up the entire middle of our podcast. The next part that cre is creating ripples is... This is a single player or a co-op game. I don't think there's a multiplayer component, and I'm pretty sure there isn't. This game is going, like I said, it's going to be a $60 release. They're putting microtransactions into it. They have a weapons crafting system. This is a horror game. I will remind you, a horror game. There's a weapons crafting system where you scavenge for resources and collect parts, and you make your own gun. 
you and the, they're saying with their microtransactions that you can't buy things from the start, so you're not just going to buy the best stuff and make yourself immediate. But after a while, everything's going to be unlocked anyway, and they have some parts that won't be unlockable until the second playthrough. And again, uh, okay. wh what defangs the challenge of a horror game more than the knowledge that you can pull out your credit card and have the best gun in the game? Done. Fucking done. <laughs> did, did Eddie just really walk off? <laughs> I, I think he did. Uh, like, okay, so here's my thing with um, this whole idea about microtransactions. So the reason why Microsoft has DLC for things where there are microtransactions, like, for example, since everyone already knows all three of us that are currently here since Eddie walked away are obsessed with Minecraft, Xbox Minecraft, you can buy skin packs. They're generally between 100, 160 and 80 Microsoft points. So it's a dollar or two dollars. Mm -hmm. And it'll give you like 30 some skins per pack. Some of them have been cheaper than that. And the money goes to charity. So they made them a cheaper pack in order to sell more of them to give the money to like, I think they've done child's play and um, the children's hospital during um, the holidays. So... It's great when you do microtransactions like that because it improves the overall game for anyone who buys it. The problem with the microtransactions like that, it's similar to the things with the Diablo 3 auction house. Since I have experience with that one, it is whoever has the most money is going to get the best stuff, plain and simple. That, now, this and, di this mm -hmm. gives a dis disadvantage to people like me who want to play Dead Space, but I work a part-time job. I work a part-time job that I'm lucky if I can fight to get eight hours a week. Like, like this week. I work four hours this week. That's it. I can't afford to do microtransactions in a game in order to get any uh, get myself ahead and be able to do a lot of these things that these people are going to be showing in YouTube videos you know, a few weeks from now after the game launches. Mm -hmm. I don't have that kind of money, which gives other people an unfair advantage, especially if we find out when the, when the game comes out that there's actually multiplayer, because that means that now there's going to be a multiplayer with microtransactions that is going to make some people so overpowered that I'm going to, you know, for an absolutely terrible comparison, I'm going to feel like it's the first week that a new champion's been released on League and I'm getting torn apart by Darius left and right because he needs to be nerfed, but la 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 la, let's nerf Aurelia instead because she totally needs to be nerfed for like the umpteenth time. And here's the thing I get out of this. A, it's a full pride re priced release with microtransactions. We've seen this before. As you, uh, Microsoft's not full priced, but it had microtransactions. Mass Effect 3 had microtransactions. But note, those are multiplayer games. Those aren't single player. This, and the, like I said, this has resource scra uh, scavenging. And what seems more, or how likely does this seem? Since you have to pay, or you can pay, rather, to buy resources, they'll make resources harder to find so that you have to grind for them in the story mode. You'll have to take time out of your day to make it happen that you normally wouldn't have to take if there weren't microtransactions. Um, yes, Eddie, I know ME3 was single player, but there weren't microtransactions in the single player. I know, I just wanted to make sure you got a little bit corrected there. Mm -hmm. Hey, he's back! I he's was back. he's I was angry. To, I was listening to Marky go, and it... it okay, firstly... This is with Dead Space, for one. Dead Space is now becoming a co-op experience, which, okay, fine, whatever. It was originally a single-player experience where you didn't have this sort of thing go on, for one. Two, I don't know if this is the actual game developer doing this or if this is Microsoft doing this to cash that in and start making no, money. No, this is, this is actually the game developer doing this because it's on all platforms. Mm -hmm. Wait a minute, okay, who's well, the game developer again? Uh, visceral. Okay, then I get to give Who's them the a publisher? visceral ass raping it's, right now. It's oh. made by Visceral, but it's also note the publisher. This is an EA game. Ha ha! Oh, that makes it even better. Okay. Why, might I ask, would a game like Dead Space, where it's making a co-op horror game, to where 
you're wanting to quote unquote, scare your players in a co-op experience. Why on God's green freaking earth are you making it to where players can buy these overpowered fucking godlike weapons right at the start for microtransactions other than align your own pockets? Well, uh, remember Fancy. what we talked we talked about this months ago in a podcast. EA doesn't want to push forward with any game that doesn't have microtransactions in it. They are taking the worst part, <clears throat> or well, actually, probably the best part of the pay to or pay or uh, free to play system of gaming, and they are perverting it to make more money. And here's the thing with EA. This is my problem with EA. So from past experiences with a job that I had in customer care for a certain console. The problem with EA is that there was an issue with FIFA 13 where people would buy um, players on someone else's account. Like they'd steal someone's account, buy players, and then they would go ahead and because you had this trading system in it, you could trade these expensive players that you've bought on someone else's account with someone else's money and transfer it over to yours. And now you have that character with that microtransaction that was on someone else's account. You know what happened when the company that I worked for brought this up to EA saying, dudes, this is messed up. You need to fix your system because everyone's blaming us and we're refunding people left and right and apologizing out the ass. You need to fix this. They went, we don't see a problem with it. Why? Because they're making money. They don't care if people are being stolen from. I have, you have no idea how many people I talked to where it was a mom going, I have like $400 in charges. I can't pay rent. What am I supposed to do? Like I had moms and dads and grandparents calling sobbing because they're like, I can't afford to get food for my family or pay my rent or pay my car insurance or pay my phone bill or pay something vital to their life because of EA's mistake with the microtransactions in FIFA 13 or not FIFA 13, FIFA 12. And see, that's another thing that really just burrows under my skin because I understand you need to make money and everything, but this is not the way to do it. If you're going to be smart about it and, you know, take a freaking book from, you know, everyone else. If you want to buy a, like a gun skin, sure. That's a great idea to make it to where it's like that. If you want to buy a skin pack for a character of some sort, like, you know, like, freaking Batman um, Arkham uh, Arkham City where they had the pre-order this game you can pre-order the freaking Batman skins and pay seven extra dollars to get it okay fine I get extra skins and everything like that just you know as a per example but don't for the love of God don't try to put it like this because if you're gonna do it like this you're gonna see people doing the exact same thing that you heard Felicity just say possibly as a thing to where they'll buy it, download it on their Xbox, and then whoop, I can throw that away now. And then Microsoft's getting, well, not Microsoft, but you know, Microsoft, Sony, EA, someone is getting freaking vehemently bitched at for this. And then it's like, uh, oh, we don't care. We are EA. We take money anyway. Smoke. Done. Flip table, rant over. But I'm a little tired, so have a nap. Zen far the missiles! Sorry, I had to get that out. Yeah, I'm getting very sick of EA, and yeah, do not condone piracy, but pirates, this game, don't let it be profitable. Please. Why, why, did, we have to, why did we have to lose THQ, and why couldn't we have lost EA, EA instead? Because, because EA, EA is EA making is too much of money off shops. of tactics like this. All right, oh, uh, done no talking about a bad game company. Let's move on to a good game company. The makers of Tomb Raider, the creative director, did an interview where he stated that they will not be making a Wii U version of the new Tomb Raider game. Now, I don't think he is... I think, the again, this is holding to a bad philosophy, but in a kind of a good way. 
the reason he does he he believes that when you make a game you have to tailor it to the strengths of the console you're making it for and they currently have it tailored to the strengths of a gamepad or a mouse and keyboard design they don't know how they would use the touchpad of the wii u controller so essentially he's saying he wants to avoid making a bad port i, I believe they should do it anyway and may, uh, have people play it with the pro controller but he's saying we don't want to make a bad port hats well, off to this even... guy hold on hold on one moment okay Okay, I would even, I would even suggest that okay, only use the, you know, because all the buttons are still there on the gamepad, but don't use the actual game, the actual uh, gamepad itself. Um, just have it so that where you can transfer um, Tomb Raider to the gamepad to continue playing if you want to. Mm -hmm. There you go. You have a use for the gamepad. Mm -hmm. You you just turn it into a portable play experience. But here's here's also the other thing is that. Let's be honest, the Wii U, I personally think, was launched too early because there are some things that are still a little bit wonky about it. Like, you can't have two of those game pads. They advertise that you could play with two game pads, but you can't right now. So, with that being said, like, what if that eventual thing would conflict with the setup of Tomb Raider if they don't know how things are going to react or how things are going to be done. Mm -hmm. I would rather they not port it over because they're like, hey, we don't want to make something subpar. We want this to be amazing. We want this to be a fantastic experience for the fans, for newcomers to the genre, to the, or not the genre, the franchise, to all the people that have stuck by Tomb Raider since the beginning. We want this to be a new start and want it to be an amazing new start because let's be honest the game does look pretty good the graphics look gorgeous but it's like if they can't port it over and they don't feel comfortable that it would fit appropriately that's fine i would rather they not then mm -hmm. rather than have everyone you know whine complain and moan about the fact oh i only have a wii u and i'm not getting tomb raider Ugh. guess what have a pc awesome Go to one of those PC checking websites and see if that if your PC will handle that game. If it will, buy it for the PC. Because let's all be honest, as much as we love consoles, like I love my Xbox. I love my PS Vita, even though PlayStation Network really pisses me off a lot. But I love my consoles. But my PC has so much better graphics. Like... I don't think I'm going to be able to buy a lot of the RPGs that I used to buy for the Xbox on the Xbox anymore. Like, I'm going to have to get them for PC because I'm going to be like, oh, you look so shiny. I love you. And also think of it this way, because he specifically was, um, he said, tailored to the strengths of the console. And he mentioned the controller. But also, this game's coming out in the 5th of March. And given the typical development cycle, this game's probably been in development for at least three years possibly five um and look at how long we've known about the wii u and how long people have had development kits they can't they it would really be a subpar porting job if they tried it just on that alone because they would have to be trying to port it into something they don't fully understand i think there's a chance we'll see a tomb raider port to wii u down the line once crystal dynamics has started working with the um, Wii U, but for now, and that's, they're choosing to avoid doing something horrible, which is commendable, especially in the shape of our industry. Looking at yeah, you, and that's that's fair enough. Go ahead. Jin, are we talking about GTA tonight? Um, no. Um, we will get to GTA some other time. Oh, because I had a question that came up on Twitter that. Go ask for it. Uh, ask it. Well, no, it's just more along the lines of I talked to someone about the uh, the thing where it pushed where they pushed it back, mm -hmm. and um, they kind of sort of had the impression of you know with this pushing back, could this be the game being I wouldn't say ported, but at the same time it, it kind of sort of leans in that direction. Ported to Wii U, the you mean? Newer no, 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 not for the Wii U, but. Ported for the newer systems. GTA I highly 5. doubt that will happen. Um, 
not not by September, which is when it's coming out. I I, I highly doubt we'll see the um, Xbox or PS3 coming out or PS4 exactly. coming out. Well, so saying, like, here's so, well, here's the thing. Here's the thing, though, Eddie, with that um, consoles are notorious for coming out if they're going to release a new console, just like the Wii U launching literally a week before Black Friday sales, of course. because that's the biggest shopping day of the year. Oh, yeah. So if they make GTA five for the new console, but it's launching September 17th, this is roughly all actually almost exactly two months before that launch date that most consoles come out on. True. So I mean, it it's possible, but I don't see it actually happening. Yeah, if they um, were going to release it on the new consoles, I see how they would do it this way. They would release a 360 and Xbox version. They'd get the Windows version out. And then when the new consoles came out, they'd be like, surprise, we also upgraded it for these things. I could see or that what they'll happening. Do. It might irritate people, but it would make some sense. They've done it with uh, Need for Speed games in the past. Or what they'll end up doing is they'll do like a Game of the Year t- edition type thing with it when after they've released all the DLC and release it on the old consoles as well as the new one. Mm-hmm. Makes sense. Yeah, I think they're just taking time to polish it up because this is a Grand Theft Auto game. They're always rife with bugs when they launch anyway, so they're just... I, I assume this is a they're taking these months to polish it up, make it look or make it perform nicer than it was. Also, remember with Grand Theft Auto 4, it was not only um, rife with bugs, but it also it still has performance issues. The game was not optimized properly. I can play it. And here's the other thing about this new GTA game is that. From what I understand and from what I've heard, there are three different main campaigns, three different main characters, and that's going to be a lot more. It's going to be a lot more of an open world rather than that very closed area that you were in. It's going to be the largest map that they've had thus far for any GTA game. So the fact that they're wanting to take time to polish it just tells me that they're postponing it because they want this to be an amazing game. They want this to be the game that everyone expected for four that didn't happen. Yeah, that, that's what I was expecting because, you know, as always, I always take this philosophy. A delayed game is good. A delayed game uh, is a happy say, game. Yeah, and a bad and, game is bad forever. And that's commendable for Rockstar. Because mm-hmm. Rockstar's always made some of the top-notch quality stuff. So Yeah, quality stuff, but buggy stuff. Buggy, Which is, again, cool. fair. Open world games, that's one of the uh, trade-offs for an open world is bugs and glitches. Anyway, uh, we have been the gaming booth. Um, yes, um, comment, rate, subscribe. Hi, Mom. Woo! Yay! Woosa! Take us Woosa. out, Eddie. No!